If your winters are cold and snowy, you probably don't think of winter as a time to spend in the garden. But we harvest a wide variety of greens and carrots through the winter from our unheated hoop house, low tunnels, and cold frames. Today I'll let you know how you can grow kale for fall and winter harvests in colder climates. Let's start by talking about why you'd want to grow kale in the first place. Though it's not one of the more popular vegetables, it is one of the more nutritious ones. Just one cup, or 16 grams of raw kale, contains 32% of recommended daily value of vitamins A and C. It's also a good source of dietary fiber, protein, vitamin K, vitamin B6, calcium, potassium, copper, and manganese. But what makes kale perfect for the winter garden is that it's very cold hardy. It has no trouble surviving our winters under cover in a sunny location here in Zone 5B. And if you don't know what I mean when I say Zone 5B, that's a USDA hardiness zone classification. And all it means is that our average annual low temperature is between negative 15 and negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's pretty cold, but kale has no trouble surviving the winter here under cover in a sunny location. One of the keys to success when growing kale for a fall and winter harvest is that you want the plants to be close to maturity before they become dormant. First, you want the plants to be close to maturity before temperatures are regularly below freezing. And second, you want them to be close to maturity before daylight hours drop below 10. When those two things happen, plants will become dormant and stop growing. So it's very important to start them early enough that they reach maturity before that happens. In our case, here in the hoop house, we see kale stop growing, usually in December, but it picks up growth again in February. And what happens in February? That's when we have more than 10 hours of daylight again. We didn't have that much in December and January. And it starts getting warmer. Warm enough and enough sunlight to get the plants growing again. So when do we plant kale for a fall and winter harvest? Our first frost date is October 15th, and we start planting kale in early July, and we continue to do a handful of succession plantings through September, early September. And that gives us plants that are coming into maturity in September, October, November, and December. And that gives us plenty of kale for fall and winter harvest. To get more precise, let's look at our planting calendar. We plant kale starting 14 weeks before our first frost, and finish planting about six weeks before. I've included a link to this planting calendar in the description below, and you can use it too. To make your own copy of the tool, simply select File Make a Copy, or File Download as Microsoft Excel. Then enter your average first frost date to see the planting dates in your area. This planting calendar should be a pretty good starting point for most gardeners, but as you gain experience, over time you can refine your planting dates to meet the needs of your specific garden. Now let's talk about planting. Kale grows best in soil that's amended with organic matter and has a soil pH between six and seven. Though kale grows very well in partial shade in the summer, you'll want to plant in full sun for the fall and winter to take advantage of the limited sunlight at that time of year. You can direct sow seeds in the garden or start plants indoors under grow lights or in a sunny south facing window. Plant seeds a quarter inch deep and water regularly making sure the soil doesn't get too soggy or completely dry. Though all kale varieties are fairly cold hardy, some handle the cold better than others. Some of our favorites for the winter garden include star boar, winter boar, red boar, dwarf Russian, cyber frill, and vates. We apply compost before planting and we space the plants only six to eight inches apart. This is much closer than what's normally recommended but we can do this because growth is so slow at this time of year. And by simply harvesting individual leaves for meals, we'll keep the plants small enough to avoid overcrowding. The close spacing helps ensure that we have enough greens to last through the winter. Another tip to make sure you have enough kale for the winter is to plant far more than you think you'll need. And again, the reason for this is that growth slows so much in the fall and comes to a near standstill in winter. And when you harvest leaves, plants will be very slow to regenerate new leaves before plant growth resumes again later in the winter. I don't know exactly how many plants we have, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 to 300. We have them here in the hoop house and also in low tunnels 
in other parts of the garden. Now this may seem like a lot of plants, but they'll be pretty well picked over by mid-February when growth picks up again here. Kale has moderate nutrient requirements. We apply about a half inch of compost when planting or transplanting, and we find that that provides the plants with more than enough nutrients, and we don't use additional fertilizer. But if you do decide to use fertilizer, I recommend doing it early in the plant's life cycle, after true leaves develop, but before freezing temperatures set in. People often ask how we water the fall and winter garden, and it's really quite simple. Before the first frost, we water regularly. That's when plants are growing and they need the water. But after the first frost, growth slows down quite a bit. So we water less frequently and only will water when the soil appears dry and it's a fairly warm day. But when daylight hours drop below 10 and it's, it's freezing most days, we stop watering entirely. For us, that translates to December through mid-February. During that period, our plants are dormant and we don't water at all. We don't pick up watering again until February. One of the best things about gardening at this time of the year is that it gets cold enough to kill off pests or send them into hibernation. But because we have to start plants before the first frost, we do employ two strategies to reduce pest pressures. First, we plant most of our winter kale indoors and we don't plant it out until after the first frost. This allows us to avoid cabbage butterflies entirely and slugs are on their way out after the first frost and aren't much of a problem. And for the kale that we start outside, we cover it with insect netting to keep the cabbage butterflies off. And we're fortunate enough to not have much of a slug problem in our garden, but if we did, we might use an organic control like Sluggo to take care of the slugs and snails. Nice. Now let's talk about gardening under cover in fall and winter. I'll start by talking about what we do here in zone five, but I'll give information on other zones in just a minute. Now, kale can sometimes survive in zone five without any cover at all, but we've found that by growing under two layers of cover, we not only ensure that it will survive, we also extend the growing season. So it keeps growing all the way to December and starts growing again in mid-February and we get a very large production in late winter and early fall. So that's one advantage of having cover. Also, it makes harvesting a whole lot easier. Here in the hoop house, the two layers of cover are the six mil greenhouse film on the hoop house itself and the cold frames and low tunnels inside. The low tunnels are also covered with six mil greenhouse plastic and the cold frames are covered with glass tops. That second layer of cover provides consistently warmer average temperatures and it moderates temperature swings, which can be very dramatic on sunny days. So inside the cold frames and low tunnels, it warms up more gradually in the morning and it cools off more gradually at night. The more gradual temperature changes are less stressful for plants and the higher average temperatures make a big difference. We don't keep these structures covered year round. Instead, we apply the cover when temperatures start dipping below freezing and then we remove it in the spring when freezing temperatures are no longer likely. Applying cover only when it's needed reduces the amount of venting that's required. We often go for days and sometimes weeks without having to make any venting changes. But we do vent on sunny days when we expect the temperature to rise above 80 degrees Fahrenheit under cover. Please see this link for more information on our approach to venting. Now let's talk about how I'd adapt what we do here in Zone 5 to other zones. For zones three and below, in addition to the two layers I described, I'd add Agrabond row cover during the coldest months. Even so, though you can extend the growing season in these zones, the extreme cold is definitely a challenge, and kale may not survive all winter. Also, heavy snows make hoop house maintenance and harvesting more difficult. In zone four, I'd expect kale to survive the winter using the same approach I use. It should also work for zone six. In zone seven, I'd only use one layer of cover. In zone eight, I'd probably try to get away with not using any cover at all, but one layer might be helpful during the coldest part of winter. And finally, in zones nine and above, no cover is needed to grow kale. Now comes the most rewarding part of all, harvesting. The great thing about kale is that you don't have to harvest the whole plant all at once. Instead, you just harvest the outer leaves as needed. 
and the plants will live on to produce more. You can snap the leaves off with your hands or cut them with scissors. Though growth will come to a virtual standstill soon, the plants will resume growing in February and it will be a challenge to harvest all of the leaves in late winter and early spring. If you're not already harvesting crops through the fall and winter, I hope that this video gave you some inspiration to start looking into the possibilities. We have a number of different cool hardy crops in our garden and I'll be bringing you more how-to's on how we grow them later this fall and winter. I'll see you then. Come on, you crazy cat. Are you going inside, Taylor?